This review has been made possible by Toyota of Naperville. As you know, Toyota has tons of brand new Toyotas available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to toyotaofnaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2017 BMW M3 Competition. Up front is a 3.0 liter twin turbo in line 6 and down below is that sweet, sweet 6 speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here M3 competition if you couldn't tell already for a couple of reasons. First of all, the competition is a more livened up version of the M cars. There's the M2 competition of which I've reviewed in this beautiful sunburnt orange. There's also an M4 competition. There's even an M5, M8, X3 competition. But today I'm filming the M3 and I can't be more excited. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers like this retro sticker pack I have available for just $10, as well as a big friggin' bottle sticker for $4, both with free shipping worldwide. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form, and you could check out my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that three liter twin turbo inline six under the hood. It makes 444 horsepower here in the competition. It gets a nice healthy bump over the standard M3. And it's an S55 engine, meaning it's actually the same engine that comes in the M2 competition. However, this is tuned slightly differently to make more horsepower, about 40 more horsepower actually. A little bit of that does counteract the added weight of the four doors for this car, but you do get a very healthy feeling engine. All right. Let's see what the M3 competition can do. Let's put it into Sport Plus. Suspension we want into Sport Plus. Steering is already in Sport Plus. We'll roll into it here, just to be nice to the clutch, but. <laughs> oh yeah, she's a singer. <laughs> Oh, and you get those nice burbles from the exhaust. Here we go, let's do it second gear straight away. Boost! There it is. You definitely feel that boost come on a lot later. And so that doesn't feel like older M3s. We'll talk about in a second, the transmission definitely feels like an older M3, but the engine, that's very new age. That's very turbo, you sort of wait for it. Driving this car around at slow speeds feels like an equivalent year 330, which had the two liter turbo. It's kind of sluggish, it's not very happy, but once you dig into it, that's where you start to feel it. Contrary to like the E36, E46, and E92 M3s, where those were naturally aspirated, you had that power on tap all the time. Now, of course, they made half the horsepower this car does, but around town, those older M cars are a little bit more fun. This, you have to ring it out, and when you do ring it out, it is very fun, but you gotta work for the prize a little bit more. <laughs> Like I said, paired to it, six speed manual transmission. Let's dig into it. It feels pretty good. The pedal feel isn't exactly what I would hope it would be, but the shifter feel definitely feels like old BMW. E46, E36, E92 definitely feels like those shifters, which if you're an older style BMW fan like I am, I like that older stuff, you feel right at home shifting this car, which is fantastic. The other interesting thing about the manual transmission is how few of them were actually made. Over all trim levels, so not just the competition, but all M3s, BMW only made 29,251 M3s, of which 5,426 actually came with the manual transmission, which is right around 15% of all M3s got the manual transmission. All the other ones got the dual clutch seven speed automatics. 
Now, 14,000 of the total M3s were competition packages, which is crazy. Almost half of all M3s produced for the F80 chassis were competitions. However, when you start factoring in that only four and a half thousand of them came in this Alpine white with the competition, with the manual, it starts to become a very, very rare car. And I'm very, very excited to be driving it. And like I said, I like the overall shifter feel. Like I said, the clutch uh, could use a little bit of work, but I am definitely not complaining. Last but not least, of course, this BMW M3 competition is rear wheel drive. This generation only came in rear wheel drive. I know the new G20s come in all wheel if optioned, but the competition F80 M3 got an updated, better tuned rear differential. It's actually an electronically controlled rear differential, so they changed some things up to make it more sporty. With that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have four gauges, very, very BMW in here. On the left, I have my fuel, then I have my speedometer, and on the right, I have my tachometer and oil temperature. Interestingly enough, it is the oil temperature and not the engine coolant temperature. A little weird. I also get this sweet light up red line for the tachometer. And of course, when the vehicle is fully cold, it will extend that red line to give you a little warning. Hey, we're not quite up to temperature yet. Up above me, I do get a heads up display giving me the vehicle speed and speed limit of the road that I'm on, which is pretty cool. And then on the steering wheel, on the left, I have my cruise control options as well as my M button. So these M buttons are basically my performance buttons at the touch of my fingers, which is great. And off to the right, I have voice commands, volume, and phone options. The overall feeling of the steering wheel, I do like it. It has M down at the bottom, but you can pretty much spec any BMW with an M steering wheel. I wish it was a little bit more exciting, like an Alcantara or something like that but I'm not complaining. Off to the left, I have my headlight switches, and down below, I have all my assist buttons. Moving on to the door, I do have my Harman Kardon speaker up top, and of course, my power mirrors and power window switches. Moving into the center, we do have the BMW infotainment system, so we'll pull over and talk about it. All right, so let's talk BMW infotainment. I'm sorry, I can't find the shade here today, so this is just glare, and that's just glare from the windshield. But this is the backup camera. I was driving it just a moment ago to get the right angle. So this is the backup camera we'll take a look at. The trajectories change, which is super nice. And I like the adjustment, decent resolution, not the craziest thing in the world, but not bad either. But let's go to menu and we have this very nice menu. Most BMWs get this. One thing that kind of bothers me is that that's a non-M BMW, but that's okay. I have some vehicle statuses I could check up on. Tire pressure, we can look at engine oil level, service required tire pressure, do a couple of different things in there. We could also do technology in action, so I can do sport displays. This is also found on the new Toyota Supra, so when I rev it, there you go. That's how much power I am currently making, which is pretty interesting. You can also look at efficient dynamics and where the power's going, things like that. My MPGs. I like these screens. They are pretty nice, but again, that is just a standard three series, but you know, I guess that's okay. Driving information. I can look at my onboard computer, things like that. Nothing really too crazy. I also do have navigation and media. I am playing off of my phone. However, this does not get Apple CarPlay which is a little bit depressing. Then I have my central locking and hazard switch in the center of two vents, very classic BMW here. And then of course I have my favorite buttons, radio controls. These favorite buttons can also be set to like navigation points or if you hit number three, you can set it to just bring you to Apple CarPlay if you have that feature. Very, very cool that BMW does this. I've always, always liked the fact that they did this. Then we have climate controls, heated seats, dual zone climate. However, I wish they'd bring back from the E90 era, the climate controls on the steering wheel. However, I'm not complaining. And I do have a little USB down below to plug your phone in. Then I get a 12 volt outlet, little ashtray and my cup holders. So we will do a big freaking bottle test here in the 2017 BMW M3 competition. And of course it fails. I don't know of many BMWs that pass. Here's the other BMWs that I have done the big freaking bottle test in, but unfortunately the M3 competition fails. <laughs> Then we come to the shifter area. First, let's talk about what's off to the left. I have traction control, which is great, but then I also have my adjustable drive settings. So I don't actually get any 
drive modes per se, but I can adjust the throttle between Efficient, Sport, and Sport Plus. I can adjust the suspension between Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus, and I can adjust the steering feel between Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. That is really, really nice. I can definitely mix and match and find whatever combination I like. And of course, when I wanna kick it up a notch, put it into Sport Plus, traction control turns off, and I get to have my way with the BMW M3. Then the shifter itself. The shifter looks great, functions really well, definitely has that older M3 look and feel. That I feel very at home shifting this car with my right hand because I've driven an E36, E46, E92, and now an F80 M3. Overall, 10 out of 10 shifter. Off to the right, this is my controls for the center screen that we talked about. I like the tactile feedback that comes with this. When you twist the dial, you get these really great clicks inside of it, which is just fantastic, and I really truly love it. Then we get the handbrake and a little center console, and that's pretty much it for the seeable interior. The seats, however, are special for the M3 competition. They do have higher bolsters. However, being a big guy, I'm not being squished by the bolsters, which is nice and something that can't be said about the Civic Type R. So I am pleasantly enjoying them. However, we do have back seats because this is a four-door M3, the only way they came for the F80s. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2017 BMW M3 competition and fantastic really really good my knees don't hit the seat in front of me this is my driving position which is great headroom good sitting back here is fantastic and i'll talk about it later i love the bmw m2 one of my favorite cars ever but this definitely takes the cake for practicality i can actually sit people back here and they won't be absolutely squished which is fantastic I don't want to squish any of my friends. I do have heated seats back here as well and a 12 volt outlet. I don't get a center console, which is kind of interesting. I would have thought I would, but that's okay. Let's hop around back. We'll take a look at the trunk and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the 2017 BMW M3 competition. Little button there and here is inside of the trunk. Don't get anything too crazy. I do like this little BMW roadside assistance sticker. I have some tie downs and of course the second row can fold down. Oh, I do have a 12 volt outlet. I love seeing that in cars. Love having accessible outlets towards the back of the car. Fantastic. But overall, nothing too crazy in the trunk, but that's not why you buy an M3. Fantastic though, but not the point. Now we gotta talk about the looks. And like I said, this is finished in Alpine white one of only 4,950 of which were ever made globally. Can't imagine how many were sent to the US. I think it looks fantastic. It gets the competition wheels, which I think are some fantastic looking wheels. And overall, I think this car really is a 10 out of 10 when it comes to the looks, especially compared to the new G20s. The G20s were very controversial. This, I think, is one of the last true great M3s when it comes to looks, driving feel, and just a complete package. And so let's get on to my final thoughts. Well, I love this car. I, I really, really do. The only thing that really bothers me, okay, there's actually two things that bother me. First of all, the clutch feel, I don't know why. It's just not quite what I thought it was going to be. And maybe this car's return spring is just on its way out or something, which at 31,000 miles would be weird. But when it comes back up, it's kind of lazy. And when I'm driving an M3, there shouldn't be anything lazy about it. It's a rather athletic sedan. The other thing I dislike is all of the leather and materials in here. It's a little too shiny, a little too slippery. That's going with the seats and the dash and the steering wheel. Again, this could be because of personal maintenance. I'm not sure. This car has had 31,000 miles of previous ownership, so anything could happen in that time, but that's just what I'm observing in this car. Besides that, this is really, truly a fantastic vehicle. The BMW M2 competition it's one of my favorite cars ever. Whenever someone says, what's your semi-obtainable dream car? I say M2 competition. But now I have to say that I'm torn. I love this car, especially in the manual transmission variant. Let's talk about what makes the perfect car. Well, it's going to be different for everyone. If you have four kids and a big dog, the brand new Kia Carnival is your perfect car. If you're single, or maybe it's just you and a significant other, you live in a little apartment, but you like to have fun on the weekends, the Mazda Miata is your perfect car. If you're on a budget and you commute vast distances, the Toyota Prius is your perfect car. If you think you have too much free time and you enjoy staring at the same FCA models in a showroom every single week for hours on end, 
the Fiat 500X is your perfect car. But for me, this, this is my perfect car. And let me tell you why. First of all, it almost nails the four touch points. Steering, pedals, shifter, and seat. Like I said, the pedals could use a little bit of work, but the other three, I think personally, are nailed. Great shifter feel, great seating feel, steering is adjustable, so whatever I'm feeling, it's feeling, and the pedals are at least a eight out of 10. It also looks good. I think it's very sharp looking. I think it still looks very modern, even though it's five years old. I love the wheels. I love the Alpine white paint, such a classic M3 paint. Love that. Four doors means it's practical. I can actually willingly use the back seats without giving my passengers too many asterisks when they get in. Like a BMW M2, getting in the back of a coupe is not easy or fun. And most of all, I enjoy driving it. I am having a blast. I was so excited to wake up this morning knowing that I was going to be able to drive an M3 competition. And so if this was in my driveway, in my garage, or in front of my home, it would make me smile when I came outside. And that is the most important thing to me that a car can do. Just make me happy. Because when I'm happy, I'm the best version of myself. I tell jokes. I laugh, I don't let things bother me. I spend money more freely. When I'm happy, it is the best version of me. This car makes me happy, and so driving a BMW M3 competition, this is the best Zach, baby. This is it. Oh, I really, really love it. Huge thank you to Toyota of Naperville for arranging this review. This is one of their used vehicles. I normally film on Fridays, but today's a Tuesday because I know this car is gonna sell quick. I had to get my hands on it. And Toyota Naperville definitely helped me achieve that. They are fantastic. We've been working together for years and I can't say enough good things, but let's roll the music. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.